Driving around the frigid tundra, you're bound to find cold weather specialists. Arctic hares with their thick coat and almost perfectly spherical shape. Marmots working on their dens where they wait out the winter. Majestic snowy owls quietly searching for their next meal. But the weirdest of them all is a little bird with the oddest legs in the Arctic. These strange birds are a staple of the Canadian subarctic. When we're out filming wildlife, I love scoping out local birds. And being here, I couldn't miss seeing the infamous mammal-legged bird, the ptarmigan. Hi, I'm Danielle Dufo, and you're watching Animal Logic. Today, we're talking about a cute ball of feathers that has taken over some of the coldest ecosystems in the Northern Hemisphere, the ptarmigan. Ptarmigans belong to the same family as chickens, though they're more closely related to grouse. There are only three types of ptarmigans. The white-tailed ptarmigan, found only in the western part of North America, and the widespread willow and rock ptarmigan, which live in the northern parts of Eurasia and North America. But we're in the home of the transformers of the bird world, the willow and rock ptarmigans. This area, with freezing cold temperatures that reach minus 40 degrees Celsius, snow that can be several feet deep, enough to cover them several times over, and thriving with Arctic foxes, is a dangerous place to live. Ptarmigans have to adapt to give themselves a chance at survival. Below their cuddly, snowball-like appearance hides a crafty animal with a ferocious roar. Yeah, maybe it's not as ferocious as we thought. <laughs> oh, these ptarmigans are making all kinds of noises. <laughs> oh, there's one that sounds like Wario. Hilarious calls aside, these little guys prepare for winter in truly dramatic ways. The most obvious is their change of coloration. These ptarmigans behind me are just about done transitioning from their summer plumage, which is a rusty brown, to their stark white, beautiful feathers. And you can see some of them are still a little bit spotty. Their feather coloration, like the Arctic fox's fur, is an adaptation for camouflage. In the summer, their color helps them blend in with the dirt and the vegetation of their northern habitat, while in the winter they turn the color of snow to hide from predators. Sometimes, temperatures drop enough to trigger their transformation before the snow falls. This makes them dangerously conspicuous, but it also makes it easier for us to see their most amazing biological feature, the mammalification of their feet. And yes, I just made that word up, but you'll see what I mean. In the winter, their feet grow a thick layer of feathers that act as a fur coat. Their claws grow to increase the surface area of their feet and give them essentially furry winter boots. Their claws will also be essential for digging burrows to shelter during the harshest months of the year. The willow ptarmigan's scientific name is Lagopus lagopus, which means hare-footed, twice. This is an apt comparison, as many of their body parts have adapted to look the same. Because this is a hare's foot, and this is a willow ptarmigan foot. Looks very similar. It's almost like everything out here is trying to be a hare, or at least a white fuzzy orb. Now, they might be the hare-footed bird, but they also kind of look like hares. From a distance, they share a very similar silhouette. And they're not alone. Animals across Arctic climates tend to have a very similar winter body. 
A lot of the animals out here have evolved along Allen's law, which is the idea that you reduce your surface area to volume ratio in order to retain more heat. These ptarmigan are no exception. They've got a shorter beak, shorter legs, and even a shorter tail to get closer to that perfect orb form. This adaptation is seen mostly in the willow ptarmigan's northernmost populations. In more temperate places like the British Isles, they keep their summer outfits throughout the year. Arctic and subarctic populations are the buxom beauties of the family. Of course, keeping warm is just a part of surviving in the Arctic. Finding food is another major problem. Luckily for these snowbirds, they have adapted to survive on extremely calorie deficient food. Twigs make up the majority of their diet until the thaw. This is also when chicks are born. Ptarmigan chicks will eat insects and young greens, but as they grow up, they become completely herbivorous. Only the best for baby. A steady source of protein keeps chicks happy and gives them a fighting chance in a ruthless environment. By the following winter, they will come back here and congregate in groups of up to 2,000 birds. This protects from predators such as foxes and birds of prey. Here, safety is in numbers. Wow! This whole flock of ptarmigans just took off and there's about 70 of them. These flocks are formed by several families. Oftentimes, the families will just stick to themselves, but every now and then, they'll gather into a flock like this. Except this guy. This guy's like, nah, I'm too good for them. It's always one ptarmigan. Too cool for school. So catch up, buddy. It's dangerous to go alone. So what should we talk about next? Please let me know in the comments and be sure to subscribe for new episodes every week. Thanks for watching. See ya.